In this video, we're going to continue on looking at the same example, and we're going to use this example to introduce how we can formulate what is known as the prior part of the Bayesian formula, and also what is known, or what I'm going to call as the denominator, which is just the probability of the data given the model choice. And just to refresh your memory, the example which I'm giving here is that we encounter three individuals who have come from a tribe within the Amazon rainforest, each of these individuals is uninfected for a particular disease and we want to know whether they come from a population which is uninfected in which case theta is equal to zero or they come from an infected population in which case theta is equal to one. And in the last video we actually formulated the form of the likelihood. So the likelihood here was just where well, it's the first part of the numerator which is the probability of theta given our data and our data here just being the fact that all of these individuals are uninfected and also given our model choice, or choice rather, which I'm just going to call m. And we found that this was equal to 1 minus f of theta, where f of theta here just represents the probability of an individual from a particular tribe and hence a particular theta being infected. And it was 1 minus f of theta to the power 3, which we figured out was equal to 1 in the case where theta was equal to 0, because if they come from an uninfected tribe, then it is likely in that circumstance, or in fact it is certain in that circumstance, that all individuals would be uninfected. And it was equal to an eighth in the circumstance where they come from a tribe which is in fact infected. Okay, so let's talk about how we can actually formulate the prior here. So what does the prior in this circumstance, or in any circumstance, actually represent? Well, it represents our pre-experimental, or in other word, pre-data, intuition as to what values theta is likely to take on. So to some extent our prior represents our pre-data belief as to the values of theta which are most likely. So in this circumstance what we can do is we can think about well what will be our prior belief as to the probability that the tribe from which these individuals or any individuals come from does in fact have the virus or doesn't have the virus. So firstly, I'm going to start off by considering the circumstance where they don't have the virus. So the probability that theta is equal to zero, given our choice of model. We're going to assume that we don't know that much about the situation, and perhaps we would just have to toss a coin in order to decide whether we thought it was likely they came from a tribe which was infected versus uninfected if we encountered anyone in the forest, before we do any experiments on them to figure out whether they actually have the disease or not this is. So the probability that theta is equal to zero, given our choice of model, might be a half, and the probability that theta is equal to one, given our choice of model, might also be a half in this circumstance. So these two probabilities obviously have to add up to one in this circumstance, and if we were sort of more certain based on prior experience that most tribes tend to have this disease, then perhaps the second probability would be upweighted, or if we thought the other way, then the first probability would be upweighted and the second one would be downweighted. So what I've tried to do with these prior beliefs here is I've tried to make them what we call relatively uninformative. We'll see in the future that these aren't actually the most uninformative priors that we could actually specify when we talk about things like the Jeffreys prior, but in this circumstance it seems that these things are relatively uninformative. Okay, so that's our prior distribution. Now we need to talk about how we can use the prior and the likelihood to help us derive what we call the denominator. So in order to work out how to derive the denominator in this example, we need to sort of think about, well, how would we get to the denominator from the terms in the numerator? Well, it's quite easy to see here when you compare the likelihood with the denominator. The likelihood is just a conditional version of the denominator, where we're conditioning on theta as well as the model, whereas in the denominator we're only conditioning on the model. So in that circumstance, we can sort of view the denominator as a marginal probability. And we already know how to get to marginal probabilities from the conditional probabilities. All we need to do is sum over all the particular values of the variable which is actually being conditioned out, which in this circumstance is theta. So in order to work out, in this case, the probability of the data given our choice of model, then what we need to do is we need to sum over all values of theta of the probability of that particular value of theta given our model choice times 
our conditional probability, which is just the probability of our data given our certain value of theta and also given our model choice. And in this circumstance, this sum is actually quite easy to do. There are only going to be two terms as part of this sum. The first term is just going to be the probability that theta is equal to zero given our model choice times, in this circumstance, the probability of getting our data given that theta is zero. Well, we already know that this is just going to be one in this particular circumstance. That's just this term up here. And the second term here is just going to be found by taking the probability that theta is equal to one given our choice of model, in other words, our prior, times the probability that we would have actually obtained that data given that our prior was correct. So that would just be, in this circumstance, one eighth. That's just that second sort of value which we obtained from our likelihood here. And then what we could do is we could put in our individual priors here, and then we would get that the probability of our data given our model choice and really given our beliefs as well as a half times one plus a half times one eighth. And I'm actually going to leave it in this form rather than simplify it because I think it's nice to have it in this form for when we actually go through in the next video and derive the posterior distribution, which is this term on the left hand side.